So I'm Dave Carter. I'm the director of the National Bison Association and <clears throat> want to spend nine minutes talking about what I consider to be the greatest story of market-based species restoration in the history of North America. So, but Caitlin said, first of all, I had to tell you who I am. So just native Coloradan, born in Longmont. I grew up in the mountains about 30 miles northwest of here. Been in agriculture 40 plus years. Uh, for the last 18 years, I've been executive director of the National Bison Association. My wife and I are partners with two other ranchers on a herd of uh, 220 mother cows that are on a uh, 7,800-acre ranch owned by the Savory Institute east of, east of Denver. Um, I was on the National Organic Standards Board for five years and was chair of the board when the organic standards came into place. And because I'm a part-time executive director, I also do some consulting and myself and uh, two other folks founded Pet Promise Pet Food in 2003, which was really the first brand that uh, started emphasizing the traceability of its ingredients. So, um, now, let's get to the star of the show, which is the bison. So if we're going to talk about the history of, uh, of species restoration, we have to go back about 200,000 years. Because that's when the ancestors of today's bison first came over from Asia. And they were big animals. I mean, they were really big animals. The Ice Age was underway, and big animals dominated. And as the Ice Age intensified, they became even bigger. Bison latrophons had a horn span of about seven feet. But then the Ice Age began to ebb, the climate began to change, and predators, including humans, learned to hunt in packs. So being a big lumbering animal wasn't an advantage anymore. So your choice as a species was you either downsized and became more nimble, or you went extinct. The woolly mammoth went extinct. Bison began to downsize. And that process happened in concert with the evolution of the ecosystem of North America, and primarily the grassland ecosystem, which covers nearly 40% of the North American continent is historically a grassland ecosystem. And it evolved in concert with the bison. And so the species of grasses that begin to develop out there all evolved under that grazing action of bison. The wallowing created the depressions in the land that captured the water that would recharge the soil. In fact, many of the lakes and what they call the prairie potholes across the northern plains began as, as buffalo wallows. The hoof action stirred the soil and planted the seeds. The manure recharged the soil, gave the nutrients back to the soil. So this North American grassland is what I call America's rainforest. You think about how important the rainforest is in South America and on the attention, but in North America, this is what's capturing carbon. You go out, 40 miles east of here, and you'll see grasses this high or this high or this high. But underneath is this incredibly deep, complex root system. And those blades of grass take the energy and the carbon out of the air and put it back down into the soil. And they build the soil. But they can't do it by themselves. If left untended, they would grow up and choke themselves off and turn the grasslands into a desert. They've got to have a gardener. And this is the gardener the mother nature provided. Now sure, the deer and the antelope were playing out there, but the buffalo were roaming. They were the, they were the, they were the keystone species that created this and helped build that healthy soil. And they did one other thing when they ate that grass, was they took the cellulose, which is undigestible by us, and turned it into a really nutritionally dense protein. And that's why, if you think about it, bison is nature's original plant-based protein. <laughs> so, so when we talk about regenerative agriculture, you know, these are the classic definitions. It's practices that increase biodiversity. They capture the carbon and put it back down into the soil, reversing the, the trends. And grazing animals are a key component Albert Howard, who was the 
father of organic agriculture, said, never does nature separate the animal and vegetable worlds. This is a mistake that they cannot endure. Michael Pollan said if he could make one change in agriculture, he'd put animals back on the farm because they're that important. Well, we almost screwed it up. Because before the first European settlers came, there were as many as 40 million bison in North America. And then through a combination of factors, uh, the railroads going through, the buffalo hunters hunting them, uh, the Industrial Revolution, the hides made great belts for those factories, so they slaughtered a lot of them. A strategy to deny the Native Americans their food supplies, so they go on the reservations, and probably the diseases that were brought over from European cattle killed as many as, as anything else. But for those combination of factors, by 1885, we estimate that there were about 700 animals left alive in North America, in the world, in the world. They had three hooves over the brink of extinction. And fortunately, there was a handful of ranchers, primarily at the urging of their wives, that went out and gathered up the remnants of the herd and began to create what we call the five foundation herds for where almost all bison come from. And there were a few other players. The Bronx Zoo played a role, and so did Teddy Roosevelt. But it was these ranchers in the West that began to, to restore the animals. Well, fortunately, <coughs> well, got this one out of sight, but tell you that. Today, we are up to about 200,000 bison here in, in the United States. In North America, there are almost 400,000 bison. We're the number one processing and marketing state. South Dakota is the biggest state with a uh, number of herds. But our goal is to bring back a million bison to North America. We call it bison one million. Now, the ranchers are playing a big role. We have a relationship with the Intertribal Buffalo Council. We're trying to get more bison back on tribal lands. We're working with the conservation community. But I'll tell you, there's a critical fourth partner in bringing back more bison, and that's the customers. The more you eat bison, the more we're going to bring them back. And so, that's why we want to emphasize that companion animals are, are vital partners for us in helping to bring back those animals. Using all of the animal, just as the Native Americans stressed. Bison can create a point of difference in pet food. I've talked to several folks here th today that are already talking about it. It's a nutritious ingredient. And we have marketers that are anxious to work with individual companies to establish that supply chain to give you something uh, different to work with. Now, I have to tell you, we're also fighting a, a defensive battle right now. As bison has gotten more popular as a pet food ingredient, some folks have discovered that uh, they can bring in water buffalo and just call it buffalo uh, on the package. And we're fighting those folks tooth uh, hammer and tongs. So we've launched on our website a Don't Be Buffaloed webpage that uh, we're encouraging people to go to. Because not only does it point out the companies that are doing the wrong thing, we're trying to highlight the companies that are doing the right thing. In fact, we have them up on top. And if you're doing anything with bison and you're not there, let me know. We're working with AFCO to do a new ingredient definition, so we're hoping to get this resolved. And uh, Senator Bennett from Colorado and Senator Hoven from North Dakota have introduced a truth in buffalo labeling bill because this is also happening in the human food market. So we not only want to fight a, a rear battle, rear defensive battle, but we want to work with you to promote what we're calling Partners in Bison Restoration. And this is a new program that we're rolling out that we want to work with companies on that you could put this on your package. And what it is, it talks about Partners in Bison Restoration and Ethical Stewardship of Our Herds. We're working with our marketers and processors. We have a code of ethics in the National Bison Association that our members agree to adhere to. And our processors, as they have those supply agreements with their ranchers, are putting in those affidavits that they adhere to our code of ethics. And it's about humane animal husbandry. It's about fair business practices. So anyway, we want to partner with companies to use Partners in Bison Restoration. Go down to that website. That takes you to a site that helps tell the story of what this animal is doing to regenerate a healthy ecosystem, healthy families, healthy communities. So, 
We just ask you to be our partner in bison restoration. Thank you. Thank you.